Chapter 9 is all about correlations, which are basically connections between two types of measurements. And they're two quantitative measurements, like in this example, sales in thousands of dollars and advertising dollars spent. Uh, also in thousands. And you want to see if there's a connection between those things. And that's what chapter 9 is all about. The graph that goes with it is called a scatter plot graph. And it's um, you've seen a scatter plot, and the next slide shows you some examples. But um, And we're not going to create one on, on this slide. Again, you've got some other examples. But basically, a scatter plot is just a... Um, a graph of it looks like a bunch of dots what I want you to get from that is each one of those dots for instance if I graphed this data each one of those dots would represent a month January would have a dot February April May all of those would have a dots and you would have two measures for instance I might have sales on my x-axis that's the horizontal one and I might have uh, advertising on my y-axis you would have a number scale here, like I might be going from uh, $100 here all the way to uh, $130 and everything in between. My advertising dollars are going, um, in this case, 5.5 to 6.8. So maybe I would just go by, maybe I could start at 3, I don't know, 3, 4, 5, 6. So each one of these would have their own scale. I might have hundreds in the bottom and I might have ones in the top. And you would estimate where that dot would go, how far over it would go, and how far up it would go. And that's where you put the dot. And the graph of all those dots is called a scatter plot. But what I want you to know, and you're going to be using technology to do the graphs for you, I just want you to understand that each one of those dots represents one person, or in this case, one month. And there are two numerical measures used to find the location of that dot. So once you start to graph a bunch of these different things, you're going to see different shapes. So I just want to kind of go over that. There are descriptions for the types of correlations. You can have uh, positive correlations, negative correlations. Here's positive. Uh, negative correlations, no correlation if those dots don't follow any pattern, or they have curvy linear. Nobody ever says curvy linear in this image. It would be nonlinear. So those are the types of relationships. And then you'll notice there are descriptors like strong or moderate. So where those come from is this. Within a scatter plot, you can sort of estimate what I call an invisible line that those dots seem to be traveling along. And that invisible line is called a regression line. And you will learn in the next lesson how to find the equation of that. Sometimes it's referred to as the line of best fit. So whether or not it's strong or moderate does not have anything to do with how steep that line is. It has to do with how closely are those dots following that line. So you see in the first example, hello, uh, why is it doing that? In that, well, I'm just going to have to get a new arrow. In the first example, those dots are really following really closely back and forth along that line. And in the second example, those dots are becoming a little bit further away from that line. And so that makes the difference between strong and moderate. You can have a weak uh, connection, and that would be where you can tell they're going uphill, but they're pretty scattered back and forth above and below that line. No correlation. I don't even really like this image for no correlation. Uh, and if I was, was drawing this image over, which I guess I probably should have done uh, before I started this video, I would add more dots kind of around here because you should not be able to tell whether it's going uphill or downhill. So that would be no correlation. Um, and then these two examples on the bottom, I wish I could move that arrow. That's driving me bonkers, but I'll just have to keep scooting it. Um, if you, Again, if you sort of estimate where that regression line goes, um, if the dots, are, if your regression line is going downhill, that's what you, visually how you can tell it's a negative correlation. And we've already talked about the strong and moderate. In the last example, if I drew sort of an invisible line 
that it looks like the dots are following along, if that actually does not make a line but makes a curve, a rainbow shape, that would be nonlinear. That means there is a connection. You can tell those dots are following a pattern, but it doesn't make a straight line. Now, if you don't have a graph, if you haven't graphed information and you don't always need to graph information, there's still a way to tell whether or not your data has a positive connection, a negative connection, and whether it's strong or weak. And that's by calculating something called a correlation coefficient. And we indicate that using the letter R. So that's our variable that we use for the correlation coefficient R. And R follows a scale between negative one and positive one. You can never have a an R value greater than the number value one. Um, so I'm going to go through and give you the scale. Now these are not like industry specific. The whole world uses this scale, but they use a scale similar to that. There's not a hard, fast rule, but for our purposes in a math class so that we can all be consistent with our answers, I'm going to give you the scale. Okay. So when you calculate R, which you will do, you've already read about how to do this. Um, there is this massive formula, but your calculator is programmed with that massive formula, and it will give you the R value. If your R value is between negative 0.25 and positive 0.25, so if your R value is somewhere within the first quarter of its way between 0 and, and negative 1, or 0 and 1, we say that that indicates that there's no correlation. So you don't have to come up with a zero for there to technically be no correlation. I'm going to erase that word correlation just because I'm going to run out of room. So if your R value is, is within that range, you would say that shows that there's no correlation between those two uh, data sets. All right. Now let's go to the next indicator. If your R value is between let's do a different color here so that it gets easier to tell, is between 25 and 50, 0.25 or 0 0.50 in the negative or over here in the positive, you would call that a weak correlation. If your R value is negative, like these on the left side of zero, then you would say weak negative correlation. If your R value is positive and it's within that range, you would call that a weak positive correlation. Uh, so going to the next quarter of data, if it is between 50 and, look, that is a gross, I can't even stand to see that there, I got to fix that. Um, if it's between 50 and 75, whether that's negative or positive, and obviously we're talking about decimal points, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, you would not use a descriptor, so you wouldn't use weak or strong, you would just, it's regular, you can use the word regular if you want, so we would just call that a straight up negative or a straight up positive correlation without a descriptor, and last but not least, if it's from negative 75 to negative 1, or the positive version of that, 75 to 1, that's when you get too strong, so strong, Negative, if your R value is negative, strong positive, if your R value is positive. So now let's go to our technology to learn how to actually calculate R. Well, it might not sound exciting to you, but to a, a biologist, it would be very exciting. So this would be if you were studying, uh, this is grasshoppers, so studying the amount of chirps per second and what the temperature is outside for eight consecutive days uh, where there are grasshoppers present. So what we're going to do is calculate the R value for this data using technology. Okay, to do this, let me just get out of this so you can see it starting from fresh. So we want to enter our data, and we already know how to do this. We've done this before. You hit your stat key, and you're right there at edit, so you hit enter, and that's what pulls up your lists. Now, notice, and, and by this point in the semester, you should have information filled in to a lot of these. If you need to clear information out of your lists, just put the arrow on top of whatever list you want to clear out, hit clear, and then enter, and it will zap all those numbers out. So what I want to do here is put one column's worth of numbers into L1, and we're going to put the second column into L2. Actually, it doesn't matter what two lists you put them in. Just remember where you put them. 
So one by one, I'm going to do this. And I have the screen a little bit smaller so that I could still see the numbers in there. So I'm going to put the chirps per second into L1. So that's one at a time. I go through that. Uh, 16. Okay. And you don't have to order them. So you might say, well, these aren't in numerical order. I better order them. Do not order them. Put them in exactly as they appear. I'm going to pause the video because you don't need to watch me putting numbers in. Okay. I'm going to... Okay, so now you can see I have uh, the, the chirps per second into L1. I have the temperatures typed into L2. Make sure you don't change the order for anything. So here's how to calculate R. Hit your stat key immediately. Obviously, you don't have to clear the screen. This time we want it to calculate things, so go over to Calc. And you want to go down to, in, in this calculator, it's number four, Lin Reg AX plus B. That stands for linear regression. And hit Enter. Now what it's waiting on is it wants to know where are your lists. For some of you, um, it, it will already have them filled in. But you have to remember we have two lists. And so you have to put commas between them. So I have this yellow L1, so I have to hit my second key and hit the number one. That pulls up L1. And then my comma, comma, L2, and then hit enter. And notice it spits out all kinds of stuff. Now let me say this. This is important. If you do yours and there are, and you just have Y, A, B, and you don't have these two, you have to do what's called um, turn on your diagnostics on your calculator. To turn on the diagnostics in your calculator, you have this little word down here that says catalog. So you go second and then hit catalog, and you have this alphabetized list of functions. So you would scroll all the way down until you see diagnostics. Oh, it's way on down there. Okay, so you notice you see diagnostics off and diagnostics on. You want diagnostics on, so make sure the arrow is there and hit enter twice. Make sure you hit it twice until you see the word done. So if, if that happens to you, if you do not see R squared or R, turn your diagnostics on and then go back and hit stat, calc, go to your Linreg, L1, comma, L2, enter, and you'll see those values. So what I'm interested in is not R squared. I'm interested in R. And that's that number that we told you about in the previous slide. That's that scale we're looking for. So for this problem, we have an R value of 0.958 if I round to three decimal places. So we don't need the video anymore, 0.958. And if you think about the scale from the last slide, the correlation coefficient is really close to positive 1. It's positive, I know that because there's not a negative in front. And it's between 0.75 and 1 or 1.0, so that's in, according to our scale, the range where we describe it as a strong positive correlation. And so we just did two skills. Number one, we found the correlation coefficient R, and number two, we used that to describe the correlation. And those are the main skills we want you to get out of this section.